Thank you. 
day, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. With faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our sister, Clotilde Sylvia, for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God, our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that we will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Clotilde. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before. Through Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. The hymn number 223, hymn number 223.
open to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. number 23, the 23rd Psalm.
while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one who Jesus loved, and said to him, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but fold, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Here ends the reading. The hymn, number 175, in 175. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fifth verse of the 16th Psalm. Psalm 16 and verse 5. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You uphold my lot. 
Psalm 16 is a, a, a declaration, a declaration of trust in God Almighty. It is one of total commitment to our Lord and our God. Total commitment to Yahweh. In this psalm, the writer and some of the language caused experts on the psalm to say that this particular poem might have been penned by one of the priests of the temple. It says, protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my Lord. I have no good apart from you. And so this psalm acknowledges and places emphasis on the goodness of God. The goodness of God. That God Almighty is the Holy One. And that his soul will delight in the Lord. But there is more. Because of course, trust in the Lord is an indication that things will go well. And of course, in the Old Testament, there is that understanding that if God is on your side, all things will go well. But within the context of the psalm, there is, as I mentioned, that sense of trust and that understanding that whatever occurs in the life of the psalmist will be an opportunity for trust in God, whatever occurs. If good occurs, fine. If it is not so good, also fine. Whatever happens, the psalmist says, therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. The body will also rest secure in the presence of Yahweh. But one of the verses of this psalm jumps out at us this morning is from verse 5. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You uphold my lot. And I think that it is the notion or understanding of cup that has captured the imagination of commentators on this psalm. For indeed, the understanding of the understanding of cup carries with it that notion of participating in a feast. Participating in a feast. Participating in the ritual and liturgy of the temple. Participating in meal. And meal is extremely important in Old Testament scriptures. The understanding of meal. For meal also brings us to the understanding of hospitality. And so God demonstrates or shows his hospitality to all human beings. We are always sure of a welcome when we come into the presence of God. God Almighty will never turn us back. God Almighty will never turn his back upon us. God Almighty will never turn us away. No matter who we are, no matter what we have done, God Almighty will never turn us away. And the psalmist seems confident about this. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. The notion of cup also has tremendous importance for the New Testament as well. For indeed, Jesus saw his participation in that to which God Almighty had called him as cup. There was a time when James and John came to Jesus and they asked him a question. They asked him a favor, a favor. They asked of Jesus a favor. And this was the favor. Grant that we may sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your kingdom. Now the twelve, the twelve apostles, but these two disciples, these two apostles, wants 
special position. So human, a story, so human. We see this, we see this in humanity all the time. But Jesus asked them also a question. Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? Are you able to drink the cup that I am to drink? And they said to Jesus, we are able. We are able. And indeed, indeed, in some sense, they would drink of that cup. For James was what, about the first of the apostles to suffer martyrdom. And John would live a long life, but he would live in exile for a very, very long time. A very long time. But what the important thing here is Jesus understanding his ministry as cup. And coming close to the end of his life, in the night in which he was betrayed, the night before his crucifixion, he would share with the disciples a cup, a cup. And he would say, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, new covenant or new testament in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we as human beings, we are being called upon to participate in that cup, to participate in the life of Christ. We participate in the life of Christ as we seek to live out our lives day by day. It was George Herbert, also a poet, who would point out that in everything we do, we are serving Christ, even sweeping a room in the name of, of Jesus. So as we come to say farewell to our departed sister, we say farewell to one who also will drink the cup of Christ. Who will drink the cup. For indeed, as mentioned, we are all called upon to make that contribution to the common life of the world. In our work in the world, in our home and family life, in our life within the context of God's church. Giving thanks to God Almighty for all that he has done for us and for all that he has given to us. And so we drink of that cup whenever we point others to the life of Christ, whenever we point others towards Jesus, towards this church. Within the context of this family, and then persons who have an understanding of what it means to be members of Christ's church. So as we say farewell to her this morning, we say farewell and thanks to God for all that Clotilda has been able to teach us, all that she has been able to demonstrate, all those things for which she was a good and wonderful example. Of course, dealing with Death is not easy. It is a very, very difficult thing to deal with the death of a loved one. But Jesus promised us, has promised us, that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He has promised us that he will be with us even to the close of the age. And so sacred scripture reminds us that at those times when we are feeling most lonely, in those moments when we are feeling most aggrieved, in those times when our emotion, when our emotions and so on are tremendously sad, in those moments at times when we are not sure how we will press on, sacred scripture reminds us that it is our Lord and our God who takes us up and who carries us forward. And so as members of this family, as you are thrown into grief at the separation of your loved one, we urge you to place your trust and your confidence in God, knowing that the God who saw the children of Israel safely through that journey, and God Almighty who saw the, the apostles through their journey, the very same God will be with you as you go through this journey of grief and agony and bereavement. God Almighty will be with you 
And God Almighty will continue to give of you, to give of himself to you, to share his cup with you, knowing that in that cup they may be challenged. But even more than that, even more than that, that in that cup there is eternal life. There is eternity and there is the promise of eternal life with the Father. As we live our lives out there, as we share in this service this morning, let these words, let these hymns and prayers be meaningful to us. As we turn our attention towards God and as we orient our lives more and more towards God, may God Almighty give us the strength to follow him day by day. And to those who mourn, we pray that you may find your strength on your knees, knowing that God Almighty will give you his mercy and his grace and his meal that will enable you to continue this journey. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You uphold my law. May God Almighty be with you this morning and in the days and weeks and months to come. And may he give you his grace and his strength in order that you may press on. So on behalf of the members of this church, on behalf of the members of our parochial church council, and on my own behalf, we extend to you the sorrowing relatives our deepest sympathy. And we urge you to be aware of the prayerful support of the church. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Let us confess the faith into which we were baptized as we say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Commend our sister to the arms of our Heavenly Father. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Your sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, and even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. If rest, O Christ, to your servant, with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing a life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as in heaven. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Let us commend our sister to 
So tell the Savior to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant, so tell the Sovereign Lord Christ from all evil and set her free from every bond, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation. May with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Clotilda, and knowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The hymn number 497, 497.
you have your Rest eternal and unto her, Lord. Let life perfect you shine.
I heard a voice from heaven saying, Right there, suffer here today who die in the field of Christ. Henceforth says the spirit they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. In the midst of life, we are in death, to whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not turn away from you. And so, and so the hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Clotilde, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your very beloved son shall come again in judgment. Both this, our sister, and we ourselves may find that acceptable in your sight. Grant it for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved, the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal, grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. When peace like a river.
you. Probably come to you. When the trumpet of the Lord. Peace like a river. <laughs> Amazing grace.
Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her peace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us depart in peace.